Hello everyone, my name is Anton, coming at you with another video. This one here is going to be about uh, Heptabase on an e-ink tablet. Right now I have the books Air 3C. So we do have a little bit of color going on on this one here. It's not their more high performance tablet, but it is pretty good and we get Android on it. So we can install uh, basically all of the, the applications that come in the Android store and help the base has an application for android and i just want to show what it looks like and what the experience is on an e-ink tablet so let's go ahead and open up the application from the first um, go ahead here when when you see the app we will notice that it's not tailored for a tablet device it it is uh, set up mostly for a phone so the buttons along the bottom here you can see are conducive to what would what a phone app would get on Android and you don't have any side panes on this particular application we will look at the canvas and or the board to see what's provided there but this here is right now is the daily journal which is easily accessible you can come in here and this is me typing on books and the typing experience is fine you can connect this uh, a bluetooth device or a keyboard to this here and you can type pretty well in here so this is all pretty functional if you wanted to actually use heptabase on the tablet when you're doing just the journaling piece here but let's go ahead and take a look at the the uh the whiteboards which is what most people would use Heptabase for. So if we move the keyboard, let's go back home. We'll go into the whiteboard area. We'll select the test whiteboard that I have here. One thing you'll notice right off the bat is you do get some ghosting on the screen where you see the, the, um, the recent whiteboards that were on the other screen that shows up here. And ghosting is uh, nothing new to e -ink tablets, so you will get some of that. Depending on how you configure the tablet to work with this app, as far as how it refreshes, you may get more or less ghosting. So you will need to go in there and kind of configure it and tweak it the way you want. Right now I have it set up to, let me see, to HD. So in this mode, you will see the ghosting right off the bat here when things move around. But if I go ahead and touch the screen and kind of move elements, then it will refresh. So every time I do an action with my, my finger on the actual screen and I move something around, then once I pull my finger up a few seconds, it then will refresh the screen. So that works pretty well in this case. If you're coming in here and you're moving things around, you can shrink and, you know, um, shrink and expand things here within the board. You can see I have a lot of elements in here. If you have the refresh a little too aggressive, that can, you know, maybe get in the way of you roaming around the, the whiteboard and then it kind of refreshes on you while you're moving around. But I found it not to be too bad in the HD mode so it works pretty well and if I go ahead and zero in say on this this particular card that's on this uh, board it refreshes the entire screen I can double tap on the screen and I can add in a new card so this is a new card and from here I can do all of the different actions that you would normally be able to do on your mobile device now that they've enable you know um, more options uh, in editing the whiteboard and doing stuff on the whiteboard on mobile devices if i select one of the objects here i got one of the cards set up we get the menu at the bottom and go ahead and expand and shrink things here um, so shrink them and expand them there and you again you can see that ghosting that is in there so if I go ahead and shrink this here, if I just tap the screen and kind of move 
things a little bit there it will refresh it and let's go ahead and go back we'll put it back here let's show if i tap on the board i can set arrows to from one card to another card so we'll go ahead and put this one it does get a little tricky and this is actually tricky on mobile in general but just because this is a little slower um, it does take a little bit of finessing here now if i want to take this arrow and maybe see if i can grab that won't let me see if we can grab that and move it here see it does take a little finessing here and should i give up or try it one more time nope so it's not going to work with me here but we can go ahead and set up arrows from one card to another card you can see how that works fairly well but if you want to move these arrows around it does get somewhat tricky you can see how i just grabbed that one there and see if it'll let me move it here so it does let me move it help the base has this kind of auto um, configuration here where depending on where your cards are it will move the arrows around uh, for you automatically i wish that was something that you could turn off because you can see here how the arrows are going in ways that i would really like to dictate the way that the arrow is set up and then have it stick and fix to that particular way instead of it automatically moving around on the board so i wish that was something you can turn on and turn off now, if we go into a card, let's tap on this card, we'll go into the card and we get, again, we can come in here, press hold, and then we can move blocks around, which is another feature that was newly added on the mobile side of things. So you can move things around. Obviously you can type on here, that works without a problem. You can come in here and if you have the keyboard set up, you can hit the slash commands, put headings and everything in there. So it will function uh, just like it would on a, on a normal uh, Android tablet that is not, doesn't have an e-ink screen, um, except you get the benefits of e-ink, but you also get the cons of e-ink because the e-ink screens are typically slower and you also have the ghosting that you can see here on the screen. We can take a look at some of the images here. So if we zoom in on the images here, so the images look pretty good. Obviously we're on a color e-ink display, so they're not going to be as vibrant and as crisp, uh, crisp as a OLED display or LED, but these are pretty good for e-ink display. Come in here and see everything in here. Shrink things down. If we come into the menu, Let's go ahead and back to center. It's a little jumpy there. And it comes here. Um, you can only shrink so much on mobile, which is another thing that could be improved on the mobile side of things, whether you're e ink or not. You can only zoom in and out so much on uh, the tablets. So it would be nice if we could zoom zoom in here or zoom out um, and make more stuff fit on the screen so that we can kind of navigate to stuff that we want but this is where it is now everything moves and performs pretty well at least on the books air 3 c um, e-ink tablet and yeah that's pretty much a quick look at how it Heptabase works on an ink tablet. Uh, not too much to, to write home about here, but just in case you were looking to get an ink tablet and possibly use Heptabase on it and you just wanted to see what it looked like, this is what you have. Now, everything else operates uh, exactly the same, but um, the performance, at least with, again, this particular tablet, ink tablet is fairly good there's no no pen use so having the pen does not really give you any any kind of benefits you cannot draw with uh, heptabase at this time 
maybe in the future they will add that particular feature to the whiteboard to where you can actually uh, hand write on the whiteboard but right now it's not there so right now you can only add in here your cards uh, to the board link them together add content to them add links in there you can even come in here and they've added where you can add other cards to the whiteboard by bringing up this this panel on the iPad, this actually does come up on the side, but on Android, for some reason, they've decided to have it come up from the bottom. Maybe that's something that's restricted to them for this UI, or it could be because the application itself is more tailored to a phone, which would have way more constraints from a size standpoint and space um, on the display. So that trying to bring it up on the side is probably not the best way to do it on a phone but you can come in here and you can easily select these particular cards here and they will put them on the board you can pick them and move them around everything works as it should work here on this particular e-ink device one thing to note here so we're in the right now the light theme so let's go into the dark theme and see what that looks like on this particular device because the dark theme I think is not as great to be in. So we'll go to dark. And let's go back to the whiteboard here. And we can see things are populating there. Let's do the back to center if we can. See, it gets a little jumpy there sometimes, but we're now in the dark theme and you can see we're in the center here and we're moving around. You can see it's a lot harder right now to, to really grasp anything on here. I don't know, for me, it's harder to see what's on here. Like this image, which is uh, dark already, that image, when you zoom out, it's hard to even know that that image is there. So this is what it looks like on your, in your dark theme. And yeah, the ghosting is, I think it's, it's a little bit more noticeable on the dark theme, at least from what I see, but having it set up in the regal mode here where it refreshes the screen is helping out uh, a lot, but it's really hard to, again, kind of make out what's on the screen, like where the edges of the cards are um, as you're moving things around until it refreshes. All right, so move around. All right, so, and that's what it looks like on, uh, on the dark thing. All right, so if that was helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. And until the next time, have a nice day.